Hi, I'm Michael and this is California. And we made it another week. And tonight, there's some promising numbers around the August unemployment rate just released in a report released by the Department of Labor. It indicates that the unemployment numbers are down and more people are actually seeking to get back into the job market in August. But this isn't all good news because the report misses some important aspects of the job market and gives a bit more firepower to their GOP to stick to their pared down skinny stimulus package. Also, Vice President Mike Pence confirms that Congress and the White House have agreed on passing the next funding bill that comes to a vote at the end of September, as long as it excludes any stimulus package provisions from either side. So tonight we're talking about the new unemployment report and the agreement between the White House and Congress to pass the next funding bill without any stimulus provisions. Now this is your five minute nightly dose. So let's make this quick. But before we do that, if you like this information, if you find it interesting, if you find it helpful, please don't forget to like and subscribe. That way you can get updates when our newest and most informative videos become available. Today, Mike Pence made a statement announcing that both the White House and Congress have agreed on all sides to pass the next continuing resolution bill without including any pandemic stimulus package provisions. The Vice President said, quote, Now we can focus just on another relief bill, and we're continuing to do that in good faith, end quote. This agreement is sort of a win-lose situation for Americans in general. First, the continuing resolution is a bill that must pass in order to provide the necessary funding for the American government to continue running over the next few months. Often, it's a big knockdown, drag out fight. Because of the bill's must pass status, it means that each side tries to put provisions in it that would not normally pass on their own. So it's good because this time around, there doesn't seem to be much of a fight on the budget and they'll pass this bill to keep the government open until at least the end of the year. But it's also bad because it's going to remove yet another deadline that would force Congress and the White House to negotiate out another deal. With this truce, it would mean that the stalemate on the stimulus package will continue likely without the possibility of a final bill in the near future. But there is some good news out of the Labor Department. Today, they released a report that highlights the fact that the unemployment numbers are down since July. According to an unemployment report, the U.S. added 1.4 million jobs in the month of August, and the unemployment rate dropped to 8.4%. This is down from 10.2% where it was at in July. This will make the fourth consecutive month of gains in the job market and decline in unemployment since everything bottomed out earlier this year in April. The president tweeted about the numbers this morning saying, quote, great job numbers, 1.37 million jobs added in August. Unemployment rate falls to 8.4%. Wow, much better than expected, end quote. So although the economy is showing signs of improvement, this report is likely going to be used for political gains. With these improving unemployment numbers, it gives some more leverage back to the White House and Republican senators who are planning to pass a much smaller and much more limited stimulus package of $500 billion rather than the Democratic all-encompassing $2.2 trillion HEROES Act. But these numbers, they don't tell 100% of the story. With the improving unemployment numbers report, there are still parts of the economy that are included in the data, but are not necessarily improving. One statistic in the report shows that a number of workers who lost their job permanently increased by 534,000 in August, after being flat in July. These types of layoffs are offset by the number of people going back to work, but don't account for the real effect on Americans who are now facing permanent unemployment rather than furloughs or temporary layoffs. Additionally, the report included 238,000 people who are only working full-time temporarily for the census, which are jobs that cannot turn into permanent government jobs. And lastly, the industries who experienced the hardest hits, retail and restaurants, are only regaining some of the employment they lost, but not nearly to the point where they started off. So yes, they gained 383,000 new jobs in August, but there are still 655,000 retail and restaurant workers who have not returned to the industry let alone the possibility that these two industries facing a slow holiday year and potential lockdowns if the virus number goes back up again. So needless to say, the job numbers going back up is good, because the only sustainable way for our economy to function is with more people working. But with the improving numbers, it doesn't mean we're out of the woods just yet. There's still a lot of ground that needs to be regained before the economy is back on its feet. Another catch to this is that with the new numbers, it really shifts the negotiating power away from Nancy Pelosi and Democrats and back into the White House and Senate Republicans' hands with regards to the stimulus package. Because from this point on, 
Now the Senate has more time and a bit more justification to try to push through their $500 billion skinny stimulus bill, even if it does leave out much of the necessary funding that some states and local governments will need to keep running even into the post-pandemic world. This has been your 5-Minute Nightly Dose, and I hope that you found it interesting or helpful or at least useful. And if you did, please don't forget to like and subscribe. That way you can get updates when our newest and most informative videos become available. Also, we here at California, we know health insurance. So if you have any questions about your health insurance, leave those down below. We'll be happy to make a new video or a new post as soon as we can. Now, other than that, I'm Michael, and this is California, wishing you a happy, healthy day.